Good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is where you are. Welcome to this English lesson. I know that all of you are here to learn a bit more English. Um, during this lesson, I will do my best to answer questions from all of you. Sometimes people ask, what is the topic for the Saturday Live lesson? Um, the topic is just your questions and I try to answer them. So it is a Q&A session. That's what we would call it in English, a question and answer session. If you do have questions, please use the form that will be linked in the chat or that you can find linked in the description below. Please remember that the chat is for conversation uh, and the chat is for English conversation. So please do not ask your questions in the chat. Uh, I do wanna say hi to everyone who was here uh, before the live lesson started. Session, that's what just making sure things are working. Question and answer session. It looks like everything is working. I, I do wanna say hi to everyone in the chat though. Thank you so much for being here. It was a lot of fun chatting with you before the live lesson started. Um, I do want to highlight a couple of things. One is uh, do keep the chat in English. Second, I want to thank once again all of my members. By the way, those who become members help support me in doing this work and it just helps everyone uh, to get a lot of videos and live lessons from me. So thank you to everyone whose name is in green and has a little crown. We have a few members who have a crown now for three months. They have been members for three months. That's awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. I'm going to jump into the questions right away. And interestingly enough, the first question relates to what I have on my monitor behind me. So I think it's kind of fun the way things work out. Uh, we says, good morning, teacher Bob. I notice you use two screens on your desktop. Uh, do you use extended mode on your desktop and what is it used for? So yes, if you look behind me, <laughs> I use two monitors on my desktop um, because when I'm teaching from home, it's nice to be able to have the student work on one screen and I can put their grades into the software on the other. But what you see here is actually a picture from Brent. So Brent is learn American English with this guy. He's in the chat right now. Maybe he wants to say hi. Um, this morning, Brent mentioned that it snowed in Maine. Brent is from Maine as well. And so he sent me some pictures. I was gonna hold the pictures up on my phone, um, but I'm using my phone for the live stream. So they're really little right here. This is Brent's deck covered in snow. This is Brent's deck as well, and I think he has a hot tub covered in snow. Uh, and this is Brent himself, if you don't know what Brent looks like. Uh, this is Brent outside this morning at his house in Maine, and you can see all of the snow. Sorry, I'm covering up Brent's face. Sorry, Brent. Uh, you can see all of the snow on the ground. So yes, I use two monitors. I can move things back and forth between them. Um, it is very, very handy and very, very helpful when I am doing my teaching. So thank you, Wee, for that question. And uh, thanks, Brent, for sending me the pictures. Uh, that's Brent is learn American English with this guy. He's in the chat right now. Very cool. Next question is from Alina. Let's see here. Alina says, Teacher Bob, could you please explain the word apprehension? It is closer to fear or to worries. It's a little bit of both, okay? So if I have apprehension about an event that's coming up, it means I'm a little bit nervous, I'm a little bit worried, maybe a little bit scared. So it would mean the same. And then just to... Um, <laughs> I'm just laughing at Brent saying covering up my face is not a bad thing. Um, so it's a little bit of fear, a little bit of nervousness. So when you have apprehension, you have a little bit of fear. Maybe I always use the example, maybe you have to talk in front of a crowd. You would be apprehensive. So you would have apprehension, but you would be apprehensive. So you would certainly feel that way if you were going to be talking in front of people. Uh, next question from Dikshanch. Dikshanch says, if I want to learn a certain accent of a language, do you think I should avoid listening to another accent of the same language to not get them mixed up? I, I think so. Now, that's a tricky one, though, because uh, some people have no problem with languages uh, and accents. Um, so it really depends on 
um, what you do. My dad was a very interesting man because if someone came to the farm and talked to him and if they spoke English with an Italian accent, my dad would start to say the words with the same accent as them. It was a really funny thing to observe as a kid. So if you easily pick up an accent, you might want to make sure that you're careful about who you listen to. So, um, and then once again, the Canadian accent and the American accent are very similar. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about which of those two you're listening to the most. Um, let's see here. Next question is from Taras from, the, from Ukraine. Hello, teacher Bob. There, is there any difference between have to and supposed to? So I did make some corrections there. Is there any difference between have to and supposed to? So I have to go to town and buy groceries. Um, that means I must do it. If I'm supposed to go to town and get groceries, it's somewhat similar, um, but it's slightly different. Um, when you have to do something, you must do it. When you're supposed to do something, um, you're supposed to do it. I know I'm using the word to define the word, it, but you might not do it, okay? So I, I could say, oh, I was supposed to get groceries, but I didn't have time. So ah, that's a tricky one to explain. Sorry, my explanation wasn't really, really good, um, but uh, hopefully that helped a little bit to hear some example sentences of the two. Um, Valerie has the next question. Hi, Bob. What is the difference between suspend and delay? And what does get laid mean? So I'm going to leave the last one for you to figure out yourself uh, because it's a topic that I don't usually talk about on my channel. Um, but when you suspend something, it means that you stop doing it for a little while. And when you delay something, it means you stop doing it for a little while. So right now they have suspended school. So they have suspended school for the time being. So there's no school. It means that school will start again soon. Um, probably not this year though, probably in September. Um, and they may delay the start of school. So slightly related uh, in the sense. Uh, next question is from Tarar. Tarar's question is, what does it is up to somebody mean? If it's up to somebody to decide, it means they get to decide. If it's up to someone to do it, it means they get to do it, okay? So um, my mom, uh, has a birthday later this year in the fall. It is up to her if she wants to have a party, okay? So she gets to decide if she wants to have a party. So it's up to her. Um, so you'll often hear people in English say, well, if it was up to me, you know, I would only drink tea and I wouldn't drink coffee. So if it was my decision, that's basically what they are saying. Let me clean up my questions here um, and let me give a shout out to Dave and Todd. Thank you to Dave and Todd for moderating the chat. You are awesome. Thanks for being here again. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what get laid means, it means, uh, I'll just be straight up with you. It means to have a relation with someone of a sexual nature. I'm not going to go into details, but that is what that means. And I usually don't talk about those topics on my channel, um, because I want things to stay, um, I don't know, stay uh, above board. That's the, that's what I would use. Uh, next question from Sally says from Saudi Arabia. Uh, what is the most important thing you wish to do before death? <laughs> what is the most important thing for, that I want to do before I die? Um, I simply just want to live my life and I want to live to be very, very old. I think because I had heart surgery a couple years ago, I have thought a lot about life and I don't need anything amazing out of life other than I just want to live for a very long time. That's what I'm looking forward to. Um, let's see here. Um, next question is from Sufyan. My question, um, my question, dear Bob, is can you give, oh, how to learn English for freelancing? I'm not sure exactly. Um, freelancing is when you don't have a boss but you do jobs and you are your own boss. So let's say you design web pages. We would say that you are, you are a freelance web designer. So you don't work somewhere, you work from home and you freelance. So I'm not sure exactly how to give you a lot of English about that. Um, but uh, I would just make sure you have good conversational business English if you are going to be a freelancer. Uh, let's see here. Um, Ruslan has the next question. Ruslan says, hello, teacher Bob. Best wishes from Russia. 
Um, no question this time. I just want to say to thank you for your lessons as they are very useful. Well, you are very welcome, Ruslan. Thank you so much for watching. Um, Ario has the next question. Ario, I'm 18. Excellent. Um, Hola, Mr. Bob. What does this mean? Back to back episodes. So if you watch a, a television show at eight o'clock and the television show is on from eight till nine, and then there's another episode on from nine to 10, we would say that you, and if you watched both, they are back to back episodes. So there's two things here. You could say you watched back to back episodes and you could say that they, they aired back to back, okay? So it just means they aired right after each other. Um, so you can use this in other things too. Sometimes um, if you play a sport, you might play two games in a row. Um, in baseball, that's called a double header, but you could also say you played the games back to back. So one right after each other. Um, just wanna jump over to see here. Um, Next question. I'm just reading the chat once in a while. That's what I'm doing. Um, let's see. This one's going to be hard to do, but I'll try it. Margarf Retha says, Hi, Teacher Bob. Please explain the difference between intake and uptake, interfacing and interacting. Thanks in advance. Best wishes from Ukraine. So intake and uptake uh, are different. Yeah, those are tricky ones. Uh, I would say you should look those up because I don't want to define them wrong. Um, but sometimes um, a place of work will have, um, let me see. An intake is, I think, when people go and they register for something. So look that one up because I don't want to get it wrong. Um, and then interfacing is when you just talk to people. Maybe you go to a convention or a workshop and you would interface with people. Um, computers also interface with each other when they are connected. Um, and then interacting is if you are in a group of people and you are talking to different people in that group, you are interacting with those people. So a few definitions there, a few examples. Um, I hope that that helps you. Uh, Nema has the next question. Uh, hi, Bob. Thank you for your lessons. I just want to ask you about the expression, have a blitz on something. What does it mean? Um, I am not familiar with that phrase. It may be a phrase from uh, British English or another country, but in Canada, we do not say uh, anything like that. So sorry. Um, maybe if you look it up, you'll find a definition for that. Um, but that's what I would say about that one. Um, Bibby has the next question. Can you create a schedule for busy people to learn English well? Well, yes. If you go to YouTube and say and search how to learn English in 2020, Bob the Canadian, uh, you will find a video uh, where I do just that. In fact, I might just look it up for a sec so that I can give you the link. Um, but yes, it is a, it is a video um, where I explained uh, how to learn English uh, with a really cool plan for the week. Let me see if I can find it. Sometimes it's hard for me to find videos quickly. Um, let me just check one more thing. How to learn English. Yes, found it. One sec. I will paste it into the chat. So that link in the chat is to a video from January of this year. And it's a video called How to Learn English in 2020. Um, and it gives you a plan for the week, things that you can do each day of the week to help you improve your English. Um, Chico says, hi, what is the difference between maintain and sustain? What does the phrase, the shit hits the fan mean? So, okay, so first of all, when you maintain something, you keep it in working order. I like to maintain my vehicles. I like to maintain my tractors. I like to keep them working. Um, when you sustain something, it means an action that you keep doing. So when I run, I cannot sustain running full speed for more than about 10 or 11 seconds. So I cannot sustain it. Um, but when you sustain something, it means that you can keep doing that activity. Uh, and I'll just, I, I normally don't teach phrases with words in it like that, but the shit hits the fan means when something goes wrong, when it goes really, really wrong. That's when we use that phrase. I wish I could show you right now. It is snowing outside uh, quite a bit. Um, Let's see here. Rada from Morocco. Hi, Rada. Um, hi, Bob. What does the word pop-up 
and chill mean. So a pop-up, the most recent use of pop-up in my area is something called a pop-up shop. So a pop-up shop is a shop that someone sets up in a parking lot. Usually they have a tent and then they sell something just for one day. So Jen sometimes with her flowers will go to a local town and we will have a pop-up shop. So it's only there for a few hours. Uh, and we sell flowers just for that time. So, and then the second one, chill means to relax. If I was to say, hey, chill, just relax. We actually say the two phrases together uh, quite a bit. So, hey, chill and hey, relax. That's definitely what those mean. Hey folks, a lot of new people jumping in. Make sure you do use the link that is showing up to ask your questions. Uh, I will get through as many as them of them as possible. Please use the chat for conversation. Do not use the chat to ask questions. Um, I see that people are starting to ask. Um, and then before I get back to the next question, I just wanted to say thank you again for being here. If you're new, hit subscribe, like button, uh, or thumbs up if you like this video. Um, we're going to go till about 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Um, I do want to thank Dave and Todd for helping moderate the chat as well. And I just wanted to mention that Sean from Free99 English, who was in my my chat quite a bit from the summer through the summer and fall and early winter um, but he was really busy I believe he moved to a new house but he is making videos again on his learn English channel on YouTube so if you remember Sean he's in the chat right now he'll probably say hi in a moment uh, free 99 English go and check him out um, he's doing Monday Wednesday and Friday videos really cool um, and it looks like he got some new equipment. So I'm kind of jealous because I think he got a 360 camera, which is on my list to get, but I haven't bought one yet. Maybe at the end of the summer, I will get one of those, but super cool. Um, let's see here. Uh, next question is from Bilal. We'll get back to the lesson. Um, Bilal, hello, sir. My question is, are these sentences the same? He got me thinking or he got me to think. Yes, they are the same. So I could say, I was talking to my brother the other day and he got me thinking I should buy a new car. I don't need a new car. Or I could say, I was talking to my brother the other day and he got me thinking that I should buy a new car. Both work. Definitely. Excellent. Uh, let's see here. Next question is from Kizmo. Um, Kismo says, hi, teacher Bob. Hi, Kismo. Um, how are you doing? My question is, what is the difference between amuse and entertain? Thanks in advance. So they are pretty much the same. I try to teach and I try to amuse people at the same time. Okay. I try to teach and I try to entertain at the same time. So you can see how in those two examples, I use them in the same way. James Liu has the next question. Um, James Liu says, hello, Teacher Bob. Will you switch to member only at about 9.30? Thank you very much. So we will do members only chat uh, in about 20 or 25 minutes, we will switch to members only for a little bit. Uh, so if you are a member uh, and you want to uh, hold out for that, that's when that will be happening. Uh, during each live stream, I usually switch the chat to members only for about 10 or 15 minutes towards the uh, second half. So look, look for that if you are a member. Um, let's go to the next question. Fabio from Italy. Hi, Bob. I'd like to know what you got nothing coming means. I heard this expression in a movie. Thanks. Um, I've heard the expression you've got something coming, but if you have, say, you got nothing coming, it means don't expect anything to happen, okay? So if I was to say, you know, I really, really, really uh, want Jen to bring me a cup of tea during my live stream, um, I could then think, you know, I probably have nothing coming. I probably do not have any tea arriving. It's not a common phrase. In fact, I'm not sure I even used it correctly just there, so don't quote me on that example. Um, but the phrase I am most familiar with is you've got another thing coming. So, so when you say, if someone is expecting one thing and you know, something completely different is going to happen, you could say to them, you've got another thing coming. If you think that you're going to get, uh, $20 an hour to do your job, you've got another thing coming. Basically, what I'm saying is don't expect that much. You're going to get less. So that's the phrase that I am most uh, familiar with. Pedro has the next question. 
Pedro says, hi, teacher Bob, do you have any book recommendations? So generally, I recommend The Pearl by John Steinbeck as one of your first novels to read in English. It's a beautiful story. It's a thin book. It's not a lot of pages. Um, and then if that's a little bit too easy or straightforward, I recommend The Martian by Andy Weir. Both those books are really good books to read when you are learning English. Um, let's see here. Next question from Pavel. You mentioned you use the rainwater for showers and you get drinking water from stores. Why don't you dig a well? Is the rain clean enough to use to wash yourself? So at our house, this is from yesterday's lesson on houses and furniture and rooms. Um, in, uh, in our house, the water that comes off the roof goes in a cistern and we use that water to wash we use that water to do dishes. We use that water to, it flushes our toilets. It's the water we use for our showers, but we don't drink it. And we don't actually buy water. We go to the water treatment plant in our local town, and we are allowed to fill up our jugs for free. In fact, Deke Shanch mentioned this yesterday. In my stories a couple weeks ago, I actually made a couple YouTube stories where I was picking up water in town. And yes, the water is free. And we don't dig a well because the water here, if you dig a well, is not good to drink. It has a lot of sulfur in it. Um, let's see here. Next question from Tom. Hi, teacher Bob, how are you? My question is, what is the difference between come and go? Thank you so much. So if I'm at home, my brother can come to my house. And then when he is done visiting, he will go. Okay, so it's a matter of direction. So he will come to my house and then we will visit and then he will go. Although my brother has not come to my house for several months because of COVID-19. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Irina from Ukraine has the next question. Um, Hi, Bob. What is the difference between talent and knack? Thank you. So when you have a talent, it means you are good at something. If you play the guitar, I don't play the guitar. If you play the guitar and you play it well, we would say that you have a talent for playing the guitar. Um, a knack is similar, but usually we use it for smaller things. Like if you know someone who can use a hammer to put a nail in really fast, you would say they have a knack for it. Oh, they just have a really knack. They just have a knack for hammering in nails. Or maybe you know someone who is really good um, at fixing something, you would say they have a real knack for it. So a knack is similar to a talent. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see. Um, the link with Nightbot Moderator doesn't work. Let's check that out for a sec, uh, Dave and Todd. Maybe it does work. Maybe, let me just check it myself for a sec. I think, yeah, I think it's working. Um, maybe there's just a little bit of a glitch. A glitch is when something works for one person and maybe not for another person, for sure. Uh, let's see here. Um, next question, A shock. How to evolve fluency. Let me, I've got too many windows open here now. <laughs> um, let me get the next question is. Ashok, how to evolve fluency without thinking in my own language? Uh, one more thing while speaking, I cannot remember words and fillers. How could I overcome this problem? So the first part, um, you just really need to be disciplined. So you need to think of a topic um, I think you need to um, you need to think of a topic that you're going to talk about. You need to practice talking about that topic, um, and then you need to make sure that you think in English while you are talking about that topic. I know that's not great advice, but you really do need to focus. Um, and if you can't remember words and fillers, I would say just practice, practice, practice. Um, and maybe memorize some fillers that you want to use in your next conversation and then make sure you use them. So prepare for that conversation. So let's see here. Um, next question is from Israel. Israel says, hi, teacher Bob, how are you? What have you been up to means, oh, so if I say to someone, hey, what have you been up to? That's the fast way. What have you been up to? What have you been up to? Um, it just means, what have you done lately? So um, that's how it would, 
that's how that one works. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see. Now I would think to open. Sorry for pausing. Uh, sometimes I do like to read the chat a little bit, uh, especially if I think maybe something isn't working right, but I think everything is working well. So Angie has the next question. Um, Angie says, hi, Bob, would you like to explain the difference between appreciate and thank? So here's how it works. If I appreciate someone, so if I like what they are doing, or if as a person I think they are awesome, then I would say I appreciate them. In order to let them know, I would say thank you, okay? So if I thank someone, that means I am saying kind words to them because I appreciate them, okay? You can also, when you appreciate someone, say to them, I appreciate you. Okay, but normally when you appreciate someone, you just like what they're doing. And if you thank them, you would say something to them so that they know that you like them or you like what they are doing. Uh, Swami has the next one. Swami, hello, Bob. Could you please explain how do you use the word touche? So when someone says something um, really brutally honest to someone, like if someone says, um, something like, um, I'm trying to think of an example here that will work. Um, so if someone says something sarcastic that you, so if one person says something sarcastic to another person and you hear it, you could say, Ooh, touche. So it's kind of like when two people are saying sarcastic things and one person says something that's really sarcastic and you think it was, um, kind of a funny thing you would, you could say, Ooh, touche. So that's how we use it in English. I apologize to my French listeners if that's not how you use it uh, in uh, France or in other French speaking countries. Um, I have a couple questions here that are really hard grammar questions. So I'm going to jump over them. So if you gave me a question about talking about the past perfect versus another tense, I, I do skip those. They are too hard to explain during a live stream. So I'm sorry about that. Um, Syat Yuzuki says, hello again, teacher Bob. My question is about writing in English. How can I improve uh, my writing? Okay, so I did fix the end of the question there a little bit. How can I improve my writing? Well, by doing more of it, but there's a couple different things you can do. One, you can copy other writing. So if you read a news article, you can actually write out word for word the news article. That's helpful. It sounds kind of silly, but it's helpful um, because you're learning the structure of what you've written. Um, the second thing I would say is find regular ways to add writing to your daily life. So respond in the comments on YouTube videos. Um, See if you can find someone who you can write to in English via email and have an email exchange, um, but certainly just find ways to write. You can also start to journal. So at the end of your day, you can just write down what you did that day. Uh, and I would also suggest if you journal, maybe journal twice a week and write in your journal what you did the day before and what you plan to do the next day. So you start to use different verb tenses. Uh, that's what um, that's what I would highly recommend. Uh, let's see. Next question um, is from. Oh, I missed it here. Um, oh, did I paste it? Maybe I. Oh, I did. There it is. Shaul says, "Hi, Bob. This question is related to yesterday's video. So yesterday's lesson was a lesson on rooms in a house in English." the furniture you find there, and the phrases we use to talk about what we do in those rooms. Uh, if you search for Bob the Canadian Rooms Furniture on YouTube, you'll find it. But the question is, there are words like bedroom, which are one word, and rooms like guest room that are two words. Why is that so? So I don't even know why. I do know guest room can be two words, but it can also be one word. It's kind of weird when I was researching it. You can find examples of where it is guest room and where it's guest room as one word. And I don't know the reason. And I'm sorry, again, I often apologize at least once for the English language during my live streams, but it is uh, weird. Uh, it is a weird language. In fact, I'm, I'm using my uh, English is weird, but I love it mug right now. 
because it really is. Um, let's see. Um, Edu has the next question. Um, Hi, Bob. How can I say that I'm studying for a public position, for example, to be a police officer? Thanks. Um, so we call it public service, but if you're specifically studying to be a police officer, I would say that you are studying to be a police officer, or you could say you're studying to get a job in law enforcement, um, or you could say that you're looking to work in the public sector. Okay, that's, that's kind of a general term for people who work um, for the government or for the police or as a firefighter. Let's see. Um, next question is from Abel from Texas. Abel says, hi, Bob. Abel from Texas, hope you're doing great. What do you know about the oil companies in Canada? Are they shutting down oil rigging? I'm not sure. I do know that our province of Alberta produces a lot of oil, but I'm not sure whether they are slowing down or shutting down. I think they are, um, but I would need to check that fact uh, before I said that for, for sure. Um, next question is from Vitaly Smirnov. Hello, Teacher Bob. How are you? Could you tell us your favorite proverb? Have a great weekend. Well, first of all, hello, Vitaly. Uh, Vitaly is a longtime member. I think two months. That's long on my channel. Thanks for the question, Vitaly. I have two favorite proverbs. Um, and I, they're my favorite because they mean opposites. The first is many hands make light work. So many hands, I'll type that in the chat. Many hands, many hands make light work. So this means that the more people that do something, the more people that do a job, the easier the job is. So that's my first favorite one. My second favorite one is too many cooks spoil the broth. So this proverb means the opposite. Um, uh, so the opposite, too many cooks spoil the broth. Um, so you have the one where it says, if a lot of people do a job, it makes it easier. And then the second one is saying, if too many people do a job, they, they don't do the job well. Okay, so they spoiled the broth. Broth is like the liquid that goes in a soup or that you use to start a soup. That's a great question, Vitaly. That's my question of the day question of the day, my, my favorite proverbs. So in English, we call those proverbs or sayings. We have different words for it. Um, let's see here. Ying says, hi, Bob. I don't have any questions today. Just want to say hi. How's everything in your town or place? Everything's going well, Ying, right now. It's a little colder than normal, though. Um, I'm not sure how many of you watched my video from yesterday. I did a special Friday video late in the day because we had a little snowfall here snow came down so if you go look on my channel if you want to see snow in may it was really really strange um sam has the next question let me keep moving along here sam hi bob great to see you i watch law and politics tv dramas to learn english since the language is sophisticated while gangster dramas may be too casual thanks so that you raise a good point you will learn the english that's related to the type of television show you watch. So if you only watch police dramas or crime shows, you will learn a lot about law enforcement, police officers, lawyers, and judges. So I do highly recommend that you watch a certain television show in a certain genre, so a certain type, and then when you are done watching that show, watch something completely different. So don't just watch um, crime dramas Make sure you watch game shows, make sure you watch dramatic shows, make sure you watch funny shows, make sure you watch reality TV, one of the best ways to hear real English for sure. Um, <laughs> Vitaly, I, I don't know how to pronounce thing. I need a lesson uh, on that. I see Vitaly in the chat um, asking me to pronounce something. Uh, I need a I need a lesson on that for sure. Maybe someday someone can help me. Um, Let's see here. Eugene, greetings, Bob. I've got one question concerning the difference between had better and to ought to. So you had better go to work if you want to make money. You ought to go to work if you want to make money. They are very similar. There's a slight difference that I'm having trouble explaining, um, but you could use them uh, definitely as very similar things. Uh, Yasmin, let's see here. Um, 
Next question is from Yasmin. Hi, teacher. I would like to understand the difference between although and though and how to use them in the right moments. I love your videos and wish you a happy quarantine. Haha. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I made a few corrections while I was reading that, just so you know. Um, so although you would like an answer, um, I'm not able to give you one. Yes, I am. I'm just trying to use a sentence with the word although in it. So although I'm a teacher, I'm also a YouTuber. So you can see how I'm using the word although to set up two related things. So although I drink tea, I also drink coffee. So that's one way to use the word although to start a sentence where you compare two things. Um, although I like technology, I don't like fixing things when they are broken. So I'm relating them as well. Now the word though is used sometimes just as a filler. Um, so I could say, um, but there are a few other things I should mention though. So you can see how at the end of that sentence, I kind of used it just as an expression. Um, so I could say, um, I do, I really like drinking my tea though. So a few example sentences, not a perfect explanation, but hopefully that helps you just a little bit. Uh, let's go to the next question. Um, so the, oh sorry, thou, thee, thy, thine, and ye, can you make a video explaining briefly the equivalence of some basic Shakespearean English? Thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure I will do a video on that, but I will try to explain older English at some point. Maybe I'll do a live lesson at some point and talk about words we don't use anymore in English and what we do use now. That might make for a good topic. Um, so thank you for the idea. I will write it down right here on my idea list. Um, and it says on my idea list, say hi to Sean. I did. I think I did that already. Hi, Sean. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, Tatiana has the next question. And let me get that posted for a sec. Um, Tatiana says, from Ukraine. Hi, Tatiana. Um, Hello, Teacher Bob. What's the difference between to drink a coffee and to have a coffee, to swim and to have a swim? It's the lexical verb. Yeah, so there's no difference in meaning or usage. So I could say that uh, I'm going to drink tea this morning. I'm going to drink a tea this morning. I'm going to have tea this morning. I'm going to have a cup of tea this morning. All of those would mean the same thing for sure. Yeah, no problem using all of those. Uh, let's see here. Um, next question. Let me clean up my questions for a sec here. Uh, let's see. Daniel has a question. Daniel says, hi, Bob. How are the flowers after yesterday's snow? Um, hey, Jen. S sorry, I have to yell for a sec. Did you get the message that the customer would like three instead of one? Sorry, this is in the middle of the live stream. I'm talking to Jen. Really? The flowers, the person would like three instead of one no. today. Ooh. Okay. Your customer this afternoon, the one o'clock. Okay. So, uh, thanks. Uh, sorry, a message popped up on my screen and I had to let Jen know. So, um, so Daniel's question was, how are the flowers? Did I paste that in? How are the flowers after yesterday's snow? We don't know yet. Some in that were like this, look like this now. So we're just gonna wait a couple of days and we will see what effect the cold weather had on the plants. Um, we don't know right now. Okay, so. <laughs> that was, so there you go, a little live uh, English conversation, Bob, yelling at Jen, sorry, I don't mean to speak loudly during my live streams about things that aren't English related. Um, next question, Daniel. Daniel from Czech. Dear Teacher Bob, have you ever visited Czech Republic or at least Prague? I highly recommend that. Thank you. I have not. Um, but I think I'm really hoping that um, travel restrictions ease next year because I would like to travel to a few places. Um, I'm not sure what will be on the list yet, but I would like to um, certainly do a few English videos about travel and I would like to travel while I'm making the video. So hopefully uh, I can do that. Um, let me get the next question here. Um, Aruna says, 
Hi Bob, which or hi, which accent is considered the most difficult to understand for non-native speakers? Um, so I want to thank Giovanni for becoming a member. Thank you so much. You see the name in green. That's awesome. Thank you, Giovanni, for deciding to support my channel and to support me in the work I do. That's great. Uh, the question from Aruna. I'm not sure which accent is the most difficult. I can tell you that the accent I find the most difficult to understand is if someone has a thick Scottish accent or a really thick or hard to understand Irish accent. But I don't know which is the most difficult. I think personally that the Canadian accent and the American accent are very flat and neutral. And I think they're easy to mimic, but people learn British English as easily as they learn Canadian English. So I don't know. Um, that's a good question though. Hey, it's uh, time for me to flip the chat to members only. So I'm gonna take questions straight from the chat from members in a moment. So if you are a member of the channel, once again, thank you for supporting me. Um, Kiwi is one of the hardest, says Deke Shanch. Um, I would think that there are some accents from Australia, New Zealand, that area that might be quite difficult. Um, let's see here. Uh, Julia says, hi, Jen. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jen is trying to figure out if we have to give one more bouquet of flowers out. How do you do it if the flowers are all sad outside? So anyways, uh, chat is members only, but I will keep um, taking questions from the form as well. Um, Next question is from Olive. Hi, Teacher Bob. How do you, I choose how do I choose an English name? What about Jameson? So this is interesting because we have international students at our school and some of our students choose names when they come over. They choose an English name. They usually choose a name that's the first name of someone that they like from a movie or someone who is a singer or entertainer or a sports figure. So I can't tell you what name to choose, but maybe there's someone that you admire and you could take their name. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Panthera Nori is having a conversation with Vitaly. I don't know what to say. He's going to be a Brent new teacher. Anyways, Alina, Teacher Bob, what do you like to have for dessert? I love apple pie, but I don't eat dessert because it's too much sugar for my diet. Uh, let's see here. Um, Mahdi says, also, it's time to have breakfast here in Saudi Arabia. Um, and let's see here. Uh, Picha, Picha Yakorn says, hi, Bob from Thailand. Hello, Picha. Can I shorten your name? I hope I can. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. Learn American English with this guy says, I also have a difficult time with Irish and Scottish. Yeah, when you hear Irish and Scottish accents on TV. They're fairly easy to understand, but sometimes if you listen to two Scottish or Irish people speaking quickly in English, it's hard even for a native uh, English speaker to understand as well. Uh, let's see here. Um, hello, Teacher Bob. Could you please pronounce during and actually slowly? Thank you very much. So during this live lesson, I will be teaching you English. During this live lesson, I will be teaching you English and I will actually be teaching you English. So it's actually, during and actually. Annette says, I hope your flowers won't, won't be dead. Little correction there, Annette. I hope your flowers won't be dead after the snow. I hope they're not either. Um, I could also say either. Remember, I used two different pronunciations there. Vitaly says, you're blocked. No, she's not. Uh, learn American English with this guy, thumbs up. Giovanni says, hello, teacher Bob, or hello, Bob. It's my first day here. How? How am I learning English with you? You are doing well. Um, if you are here, you made it to a live lesson. So you're hearing a native English speaker answer questions about English. I hope that you uh, learn a lot. There are a lot of videos to watch on this channel if you want. Um, but uh, yes, thank you and welcome Giovanni. Uh, welcome as a new member. Uh, Picha says, is it true that Canada is a very safe country with less crime? Um, so. In some parts of Canada, there is very little crime, but as we say in English, people are people. So we do have crime in Canada. There are places in some of our bigger cities where it's not safe to go at night, um, and there is definitely crime. So even here on our farm, sometimes we realize that we need to make sure things are locked at night uh, because we don't want people to steal things. In fact, if you are watching my stories, 
there is road construction down the road and they had a piece of equipment stolen a week ago. So um, there you go. Um, can flowers pass away? Yes, flowers can die. We have flowers outside that are very cold hardy or very tolerant of cold and they'll probably be fine. Uh, but the frost and the freezing night might kill some and then we'll just replant. We just keep planting. Um, let's see here. What's the meaning? This is from Madi. What's the meaning of cut them loose? So if you cut someone loose, it means you let them go. Let's say you have teenage kids and you have a lot of rules and they're not allowed to go out, but eventually you need to just cut them loose. You just need to let them go and become adults. So that's what cut them loose means. Uh, let's see here. Um, is it still snowing? No, the snow has stopped. That's from Marina. Alina says, yes, sugar is a problem. Uh, I wish I could stop eating desserts, but a good cheesecake, it's my weakness. Cheesecake is really, really good. I do like it. Um, let me see, let's make sure I don't miss anything. Um, learn American English with this guy. I lived in the southern part of the United States for much of my 20s, so I don't have difficulty when listening, but the black southern American accent can can't be difficult for some or can be difficult for some. Yeah. So the, the United States has a variety of accents, probably hundreds of accents. Um, I don't struggle with many of them because you do hear a lot of them on television. Um, Lolly says, please, could you say hello to Jen for me? Thanks. I will do that, Lolly, for sure. Uh, Daniel, Bob, is the correct use this phrase? I need to take a decision. Oh, it's make. Yes, you need to make a decision. So Daniel, you would say, I need to make a decision. So maybe you're just humming and hawing. That's what we say in English. When you can't make a decision, like, do I want tea or coffee? We would say that you are humming and hawing. So you're, you're having trouble making the decision, but eventually you have to make a decision. Um, teacher Bob, what is a knockoff effect or knock on? I don't remember exactly. So a knockoff is another word for something that is fake. So if you have like, I have this hat and it has the John Deere logo on it. And I bought this from a John Deere store. But if I go to downtown Toronto, I can find places to buy stuff that is a knockoff. That means it's a fake or a counterfeit. Um, I think that's what you're asking. I'm not sure about knockoff effect. Um, I think you're thinking of a different phrase and I can't think of it uh, anymore. Um, Vitaly, does kick-ass mean really cool? Yes, people will sometimes say, oh, I saw a movie the other day and it was a kick-ass movie. Um, it's slang and it's informal, but it's definitely used, okay? You will hear it a lot. Like, man, that's a kick-ass motorcycle that you have. Kim has how to pronounce button. Can I pronounce it as button? So it's button. So this shirt has a lot of buttons, buttons, buttons. I guess you could say button, button, buttons. Hopefully that made some sense. Uh, Julia, what is your favorite English words? I like serenity. Uh, I like the way it sounds. Uh, I do like, um, I like the word Shenandoah. Uh, maybe Brent, who used to live in the Southern US, knows a little bit more about that, but I love that word. It has a great sound to it. Um, and Annette says, hi, dear teacher, are you, Tele-teaching during this confinement. Oui, bien sûr. J'entends uh, chaque jour avec mon ordinateur là. I teach every day with my computer right there. Definitely. Uh, learn American English with this guy. The main accent was voted the fourth sexiest American accent. I'm not sure if I should be proud of that or not. So yes, uh, Maine definitely has an accent. The Upper East Coast of the United States has a variety of accents. That's uh, for sure. Um, as does the east coast of Canada. Um, Sean from Free 99 English has a very neutral accent, but if you were from, he's from New Brunswick, if you were from Newfoundland, you would have a much stronger accent. So Saul has the next question. Um, let's see. Bob, I want to know how to use what the heck. Thank you. So that's an expression. It's a softer form of the of swearing. If you say what the hell, that's swearing. So people sometimes say what the heck. And it's an expression when someone does something and you and you don't believe they decided to do it. So if someone was to like eat all of your food in the fridge. Let's say we had pizza and there were two slices left over and I put them in the fridge because I wanted to eat them the next day and I open the fridge the next day and they're gone, I could say, what the heck? Who ate my pizza? 
So it's an expression of disbelief or you're questioning something. Um, Let's Rock Your English has joined as a member. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Let's Rock Your English and for becoming a member. That is awesome. Um, let's see here. Um, free 99. Uh, oh, just chatting with, uh, Brent there for a bit. Uh, Delisa Ortiz, the weather in Puerto Rico is really hot right now. I want some snow here. I'm not sure you want it. Maybe you want it. Maybe I'm not sure. I certainly it is very, very, uh, um, cold here. Yeah. You know, I would rather the weather just evened out a little bit where it was a little warmer here and maybe a little cooler there for you. Um, next question is from, let's see here. Um, Vitaly Smirnoff, what is the sexiest accent in Canada? Most Canadians sound the same, um, but I like people who speak English with a slight Quebecois French accent. I find that to be very cool to listen to. Uh, Harry from Indonesia. Hello, Teacher Bob. How's it going today? I have a question with the difference between seesaw and watch and how to use it. So if I see something, that means right now I'm seeing it. You know, I can see this pen. I could say yesterday I saw the pen on my desk. So that's the past tense. Uh, And when you watch something, it's usually something like um, you watch TV or you watch your kids play baseball. So it's an activity where you're sitting and you're observing someone. That's a simple explanation. Uh, But uh, I think that works. Uh, Let's rock your English. Hey, Bob, greetings from Brazil. Hello to you down there in Brazil. Very cool. Let's get to the next question from Nori. Um, So Nori says, hi, teacher Bob. Arguing means always that you are quarreling or can it mean also that you have only arguments or something? Thank you. Thanks a lot. So this is something I need to clear up. Uh, We did a video this past week. Um, Jen and I did a video together and we talked about Uh, marriage and we talked about some English words and phrases about marriage. There's a link in the chat right now from Nightbot. Um, We talked about arguing. Arguing is when you disagree with someone using words. In English though, you can also use the word fight to talk about an argument. So um, you can say, you know, Jen and I fight a lot. That doesn't mean that we hit each other. We never hit each other. Um, When you use the word fight in English, it can mean argument. It can also mean that you're physically fighting. So when uh, people who are together, who are dating or married, say that they are fighting, they usually 99% of the time are talking about arguing. But to get back to uh, your question, let's see here. Um, Yeah, arguing just means that you are disagreeing verbally. Uh, Panthera Nori, Teacher Bob, can you use the word widely, like highly, really, etc.? It's definitely the same. Yeah, so it's widely accepted. Yeah, no, you can't use it exactly the same. You can use, this is highly recommended, or this is widely accepted by many people, uh, or a lot of people really like this. So they're slightly different, but they all are used to amplify what you're talking about. Uh, Gonzalo, hi, Mr. Bob. Please, how do you pronounce the word theater? Thanks in advance. Theater. So I think in Britain they say, I don't want to try and pronounce it. It's definitely not the French pronunciation, which is théâtre, uh, but it's theater. In English, you would say theater. Um, uh, I see, said the blind man as he picked up his hammer and saw. Yes. So that that's an interesting phrase to Uh, decipher Sean thanks for that Uh, learn American English with this guy it seems as if people who live in Alberta sound like they are from the US to some degree yes they have a little bit uh, of an accent there for sure Uh, let me get one more question and we will flip the chat back uh, from members only I do want to thank all my members again Hansa says hello Bob it's my first time I comment I would like to say hello Mr. Bob could you do some videos about some tests like TOEIC and TOEFL? That could be helpful. I, I have that on my list. Um, I haven't made any videos like that, but during the summer, my oldest son is home and we might make some videos for test preparation. We haven't figured out exactly how to do it yet, uh, but it's definitely on my list. Um, Panthera Nori, Teacher Bob, that's why I asked you about arguing. <laughs> Thanks. It occurred in your video about marriage. Thank you for explaining so it is clear. You are welcome. Um, hey, sum me on. Welcome and uh, thank you for becoming a member. That is awesome. Uh, you are appreciated for that. I am now going to go back and for the last bit here, 
uh, we will turn members only chat off. I do, however, want to once again thank my members. Some people think I thank my members a lot. That's because I do really appreciate all of you. You are awesome. Thank you so much for being here and helping support me in my channel. Next question from Hung. Hung says, when do the live lessons take place? So I fixed the sentence there a little bit, Hoon. When do the live lessons take place? So every Friday morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You'll have to do the time conversion yourself, but every Friday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let me clean up my questions here, folks. I actually got through quite a few questions today. Um, I'm not sure I can get through them all. We'll see. Jack, do you think we will have war in the future? A little correction there, Jack. Do you think we will have war in the future? No. I think as long as there's 662 people all talking together uh, on my channel, that gives me hope that people around the world will learn to live in peace because we have people in this channel from almost every country um, and it's just awesome. So be kind, be nice, let's all get along. Um, let's see here. Next question from Rob, explain the usage of being and bean. I always confuse these two. So first of all, bean and bin, there's two pronunciations. Um, but being, so if you're being rude, it means that you are currently rude. If you're uh, being annoying, it means that you are annoying. So I don't know if I can explain this well, Rob, right now, um, but you could say something like, um, it's been a long time that I have, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to explain this one well, because they're not totally related. Um, so I think that's, I'm gonna skip that one. I don't often totally skip a question, but uh, that's very hard. So Nagam has the question. Nagam, what does the phrase, it is raining cats and dogs mean? It means it's raining really, really hard. So if it's pouring rain and there's just a, like a lot of rain coming down and you can hear the rain on the roof, we would say it's raining cats and dogs. Now, this is a phrase that you learn when you're learning English. It's in almost every single book, but I'll be honest with you, you'll hear it once in a while. You won't hear it a lot. Um, if you use the phrase, people won't look at you funny. It's an okay phrase to use, but we usually just say it's pouring rain. Um, and then maybe once in a while, an, a person my age or older will say it's raining cats and dogs. So it is a phrase, an idiom that's, I think, in every English textbook. Um, and it is used once in a while, but it's not, it's not in high usage anymore. Uh, let's see here. Um, Isliam, hi Bob, is there any difference between saying my friend and friend of mine? So the second phrase you would say, a friend of mine. So I could say, my friend went to a movie last night. I could say, a friend of mine went to a movie last night. Those mean exactly the same thing, okay? Um, there's no difference between the meaning of those two. But you do have to say, a friend of mine, okay? There has to be an a uh, in front of that. Uh, let me see here. And... The next one is, okay, I am skipping grammar questions. Sorry about that. Uh, Eon Alves Barbosa, what's the meaning of cover to cover? So I fixed your question there a bit. What's the meaning of cover to cover? When you read a book cover to cover, it usually means you liked the book, you read the book fast maybe, uh, and you read every single word in the book. You read it from the front cover to the back cover. So if I say to someone, you know, here's a great book to read. I read it cover to cover, like it was amazing. So basically it's a way to describe a book that you liked and kind of how to, a way to describe how, what it was like to read it. Ah, I'm having trouble speaking English right now. Um, next question, Enrique. Hey, greetings from Dominican Republic. What does the phrase, what's, oh, the phrase is actually, what's the damage? And it's the same as asking, what is the price? So if I go into a store and I buy 20 things and the person beeps it through at the cash register, at the end I could say, what's the damage? It's slang, it's very informal. It's used sometimes, but it basically, if you say, what's the damage? It's the same as saying, what's the total or what's the price? Uh, how much do I owe you? 
that would be what that means. Let's see. Um, River Lee has the next question. River Lee, hi, Mr. Bob. Could you explain the difference between every day and every single day? Thank you. They mean the same thing. The second one is just used for emphasis. So if I say um, I drink one cup of coffee every single day, I'm emphasizing that I drink it every day. They mean the same thing, though. There's no difference between the two. Um, oh, learn American English with this guy. Says, thanks for the chat. He has to leave. No problem. See you, Brent. Um, let's see here. Um, Alina. Let's see. Alina's question is, what's the difference between started to do and started doing? For example, I started to learn and I started learning. Thank you for your videos. Those two sentences mean the same thing. I could say last week I started to learn to play guitar or last week I started learning to play guitar. So they're both correct and you can definitely say both of them. Hey folks, I almost got through all the questions today. There's about 20 left. I, I, I do need to wrap this up though. So I do wanna say thank you uh, to everyone who is here. If you are not subscribed to this channel, please click the red button below. If you enjoyed this lesson, give me a thumbs up. If you like to support me and become a member, there's a link in the chat coming up in a second. Um, please consider subscribing. Please consider joining my channel and supporting me. It's awesome. Thank you to all of you with your crowns and your green names in the chat. You are all very awesome. And thank you to everybody who's here learning just a little bit of English. Thanks for your questions. I hope that you were able to learn just a little bit more English. Um, thanks to Dave and thanks to Todd who are instrumental in making this work. By the way, Dave and Todd don't do this for free. I do give them something for helping me out. Uh, in fact, later this year, we're gonna have a special live stream just for Todd and Dave. Um, I'll tell you more about that in July or August. But right now, I just wanna say thank you to everyone who is here. Um, and if you have time, uh, go and watch uh, the video that I am linking in the chat right now. Uh, it's a little bit long, but you will get to meet Jen. So we did a lesson on English and it was a lesson about marriage. Uh, you might enjoy it. So anyways, thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna push the button now, say bye to all of you. Um, the button's not showing up on my screen, just like every other week. And I'm still clicking in the wrongs. There it is, bye everybody.